Well, hello, uh, everyone. It's nice to see you all. So, a welcome to you, whether you're uh, with us real time or ca on catch up. So, nice to see you. I'm really looking forward to today's session, which is building on last week, uh, looking at mental health and well being in colleges. And I'm delighted we've got two very willing volunteers. I think that's uh, maybe pushing it too much, is it? I don't know. But uh, real uh, uh, thanks to, to Lorna Jenkins from West Lothian College and Sandra Doherty, who's coming from in from West College Scotland today. So I'm, I'm delighted that they've uh, agreed to kind of share their experience and, and how they're progressing the, the whole issue of, of uh, or supporting the progress of uh, health and well-being and mental health uh, in their colleges. And as uh, Barbara mentioned last week in, in the first of these sessions, there's nothing new in this. And in fact, uh, it seems like years ago in a totally different universe when we had the last uh, College of Alta reports and enhancement plans. I worked with one of my colleagues to, to look through the, all of them for, from all the colleges. And uh, within that, within outcomes and impact, that even then you could see that the issue of health and well being, um, it, you know, being something which was, you know, on the rise. And of course, with the, the advent of the pandemic, you know, that has just taken it to a, a whole new level. So, what we're going to do today is going to hear from uh, both Lorna and Sandra just from a, a different aspect in the different colleges as to their approach to taking it forward and, and one thing that we are always mindful in this in, in the sort of title for this session I talked about our learning communities because what is is quite clear it's not just about students it's about staff as well and naturally our focus in these conversations is about students but I think we're always mindful that in delivering services and supporting students it's not just that it's uh, remote learning, blended learning and remote support services, staff themselves are having to design and develop and deliver these working in a whole new environment, working remotely themselves too. So I, I know we're time bound today and I don't want to take up any uh, of your time listening to, to me. So I'm uh, going to hand over to Lorna, who's going to uh, tell us a little bit about West Lothian College and what's uh, happening there. OK, Lorna, over to you. Great, thank you, Scott. Um, and one thing you mentioned there was that obviously there recently in recent years there has been a, a rise in mental health difficulties. It was something I was going to touch on. I think because of that, colleges are quite prepared and they're set up to support students with mental health difficulties. Colleges come from a, a trauma-informed um, stance and we're aware of proactively supporting students who are vulnerable. And then I think on the back of that, colleges do become a safe space for students. Um, students have good relationships at college, they have positive experiences, and they feel listened to and supported. So that then, when lockdown kicked in initially, I think that led to difficulties where for students, college is that safe space. And there was very little preparation time um, to put things in place for those students. So our immediate response at West Lothian really was about everybody pulling together, first of all, to ensure that students were safe. So that was ensuring that they had money, ensuring they had food, eating, um, contacting our vulnerable students that we normally see regularly for support and checking in with those students. Um, we worked in partnership with, with all of our local services, food bank, social work, the council, um, and we reminded college staff about safeguarding procedures um, and how we could adapt these when we were working remotely to ensure that all staff knew if they had a, a worry or a concern about a student's wellbeing, they knew how to how to deal with that when nobody was on campus. So that, I think that was definitely our first um, priority was ensuring the, stu the students' um, safety. Um, once we kind of put things in place in relation to that, um, it was really about seeing if students and equipping students to, to learn um, remotely. And that was all of the practical stuff like the ICT, the lap, laptop loans, the dongles, um, ensuring students had what they needed and making sure they could access the, the systems and knowing how things worked. And I have to just say, if you hear funny noises, I've got a French bulldog at my feet and uh, she does make a funny noise. So that's not me, um, I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> Um, so once students were equipped and we felt we could access learning, um, it was about how we continue to support them. How could they still access services that we offer day in, day out on campus? How could we offer that remotely to students? Because students 
like you say, Scott, like staff, we all missed the same thing. We missed the contact, we missed seeing each other, we missed the informal learning that happens. It's not all about the set lessons, it's all of the stuff that goes around um, being at college. So again, we tried to offer as much support as we could, whether that was one-to-one, -one, whether our student support teams were, were going into classes to get to know students, to encourage them to, to reach out for support. And then it was looking at the other services we offer, um, the counselling service, could that, offer, could that be offered remotely? And yes, the clear answer is it can, and it works very well for some students. Um, promoting different services around West Lothian that students could still access whilst college um, was closed. And, and obviously throughout lockdown, now we can look back and we've had a mix of offering different things when college has either been opened or you know, learning has been blended, or college has been uh, practically closed. I think what's what's good about the FE sector is colleges are normally very responsive to change anyway. So although this has been a massive change, I think colleges do respond quickly to what's needed. Um, so so that way of working has has kind of stood stood us in good stead. Um, as time has progressed, we've had to look at how do we sustain um, support and how do we provide it in different ways and how do we provide support in a way which different students are going to access. Um, and again, that's about sending out information, using social media, um, making sure staff are available on the phone or there's a, a skeleton staff in campus for those that may need it. And again, we've had to offer out a lot of practical support um, at Christmas time, we worked with River Kids um, to provide presents, maybe for parents who couldn't provide this year. Uh, we have the Larder in West Lothian College, who um, in West Lothian Council, who provide hot meals and food banks and so on. And I think an awful lot of it has been about communicating with students. So, so students who feel isolated at home, how do we reach out to them and how do we reassure them, um, and how do we re reduce anxiety? So we've, we've de developed a lot of our support services and we've managed to, to keep those supports going throughout lockdown. Um, and again, it's about identifying what's going to create anxiety around our students and, and how can we how can we dissipate that. So it might have been, you know, college was physically closed at Christmas. So did we equip students with other resources and sources of information so that if they hit a, a, you know, a, a sticky patch, they knew where to go for support. Staff needed that break at Christmas too, so it was really important that we provided um, students with other information. Um, and because because a lot of social contact has been cut down, colleges are still that one place that students know that they can go and they can get a response. We've we've talked a lot in our, in our teams about the impact of of all of this on staff, um, and we really acknowledge that it's important for staff to look after ourselves so that then we can support others and and we've talked about things like the boundaries of a working day the structure of your working day making sure you put in a lunch hour or you take some exercise and um, communication is a big thing um, as well so staff and students don't feel isolated and um, but they feel reassured they know what's happening um, and they're, they're being um, encouraged to, to to look at what their priorities are so colleges have been, had to be really flexible in terms of delivery, uh, in terms of recording um, sessions so that students can access them later on. Um, so that, that's, that's been really important. Using, so for, for students now, I would say we've put in sort of layers of support that can be accessed in different ways. We've adapted the support that we've always had at college and teamwork has been really important in that. So how does your student support team talk to your IT team, to your, your library, um, to your student association, and how do you work together to provide uh, support for, for your students? Um, again, in terms of staff, it's been around adapting what we offer. So is it about having a, a daily coffee catch up with your colleagues where you don't really chat about work? but you replicate that 10 minutes in the morning where you go in and you put the kettle on and you have a bit of a blather. You know, I think it's around seeing what suits your teams and, and your students and, and just trying to replicate as best as you can so that they're not missing out on things they would miss out on when they're physically in college or physically in work. Um, as a staff group, we, we use Teams, we use a beverage room, 
Uh, there's been lots of fun stuff going on. We've provided um, opportunities to maybe do group exercise together or, or yoga or mindfulness or wh whatever tools you need equipped with um, to look after yourselves and look after your students. Um, that's kind of what we've what we've worked through. And as we had a, a wee chat before we came on there, we have been very responsive and reactive. And now we can kind of st stop and see how do we sustain this going forward. Talked about some of the tools that we can all use, and I'm going to pass over to Sandra, who's going to talk a little bit more detail about um, some of the tools that she's been using um, at West, West Collins, Scotland. Sandra? Yes, yeah, yes. yes. Lorna, thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you to College Development Network for inviting both of us on this morning. Um, I would like to endorse everything that Lorna said. And at West College Scotland, we are actively involved in all aspects of supporting our student and our staff mental health. I'd like to introduce you to a recent initiative called CAM Curriculum. This initiative at West College Scotland was really born from the fact that lockdown happened and very quickly we had to live in a virtual world and if I can reflect back a wee bit to take you forward and how, we, how we're doing with it now I am part of a, a healthy working lives group in the college as well as teaching and I was tasked with coming up with some form of tool or support for students and staff to maybe take away some of the anxiety of living in this virtual world which we now find ourselves. And before lockdown, my colleagues and myself were very aware of every time we delivered a lesson face to face, there was some aspect of student anxiety, stress management or mental health that we dealt with on a day to day basis. And through our group guidance support, we would discuss how best to do that. When we all became virtual, the anxiety and nerves through the screen were palpable. And it was how we could introduce something to help our students who were maybe not um, very confident in the virtual world. Their internet may have been problematic for them, what particular devices they used. And there's a real fear among some students, as we know as educators, on touching a computer and what it can actually do. So it's, it's, it's really, it, it was difficult. So when I thought about it, one of my, my skills, I feel like, is being a mindfulness uh, practitioner. And I know what it does for me. So I could only speak as I find and, and what I know would help. But it was putting that into the virtual world and making that meaningful for staff and students at this time. So CAM curriculum was born from that and it takes the form of a brochure which talks about what CAM is and I'll explain that in just a moment to you. There are two practices and the two practices are uh, the focus breath and colour breathing and it had to be simplistic in its, its um, perfectness. It had to be very simplistic. And this is an example of the brochure uh, that we came up with. And the students take that away, they get an electronic copy. And to complement that, there is a little card, a little business card that they can pop into their pockets or their bags. And there was buzzwords on the car card, which would take them to a, a calm resolve or take them to a mindfulness safety valve once they had learned the practices. There's also a video of the two practices and there's audio. So it meant that the students could download that and put it uh, on their devices and listen to it any time they liked. If they were in college time with their tutors, with their lecturers, the lecturer can use this technique at the start, during or at the end of a lesson. And they would gauge the levels of anxiety within the group maybe coming on and not feeling as if they were gelling or maybe quite down in that day's lesson and starting with some calm would help the focus. Um, so what I worked with there was, how do I roll it out? And at West College Scotland, we have our senior management 
we have our uh, heads of sector, CQLs, lecturing staff, support staff and students, with a few other layers thrown in there as well. And I wanted to start from like a tiered structure down to get the people on board that I needed to get on board to sell it. And when it received a very um, positive reaction, not everybody bought in because it's not everybody's thing, but the people that did were very supportive of the technique. And what I did was came online, spoke about it, showed the brochure, and then actually did a practice. So we, we were, it was just really lovely. We were there doing mindfulness together and practicing together on, online. And um, the college management were very keen then to get that rolled out. Um, so then uh, from a lecture, lecturer point of view, I was invited on to guidance classes and in guidance groups, we would share together. And from that people, I would encourage them if you want to put your screen off, if you want to lie down, uh, sit up. I went through the technique and I got feedback at the end. And then um, from there, some students were identified as having a real need in a, for a one-to-one -one session. So we moved on to, to deliver a uh, one-to-one -one where I would come in for between 45 minutes and an hour. And those students were ready to walk and leave their courses. And I'm really delighted to say that now they're back on track. They're uh, still in their courses, they're still with us. And it's just lovely to give them a coping mechanism or a tool that they can use um, to help them get through the day basically and help them to engage. The words of CAM are important for us all, I feel, uh, as a teaching staff and as students. And I really felt passionately about describing them when I was talking about the technique. And the CN CAM is for care. And it would allow the lecturer to open up dialogue at the start of the lesson and how the students were caring for themselves. What was their diet like? Were they getting fresh air? Um, what, were, what was their social network, their support network? Did they have a shoulder to cry on? Or were they, they quite lonely? And maybe they wouldn't have opened up and spoke about that before. The A is for attitude or attention. And it was what were they coming to in college that day? What was their focus? What did they want to get out of their lesson? Were they dreading the online? And just a little bit of dialogue about that was great at the start of a lesson to see if anybody was really terrified of being online and, and what computers they perceived that computers could do um, and that they weren't coping with using them. These, the C and the A weren't used every time that we introduced CAM, but you could cherry pick what you wanted that day for that lesson. The L was listening and actually listening to any negative self-talk. We all tell ourselves continually how we're not doing that well or we're not coping. But with uh, meditation and mindfulness, you're really learning through the practice to not ruminate in the past, not be fearful of the future, but to live in the now with gratitude and really feel grateful for what you've got, for your time in college and um, where you see yourself using your qualification and sticking in with it. And the M was mindfulness, or is mindfulness, and that's the practice that we use um, and, and uh, what we do when we deliver CAM. It's been well received, and I'm in the process of evaluation at the moment. As we evaluate, um, we consider the fact that I've managed to see to date on that kind of a guidance brought into like face to face, if you like, but virtually. Uh, I've managed to see 170 students and 140 staff, and we're continuing to do that. What rolled out and was an offshoot of CAM, which I didn't consider when starting it, was um, that we have our mindfulness in the moment session now, once a week, and it's a virtual drop-in. You don't need to book, and people can come in and do an hour sit um, where I'll take them through a mindfulness practice. And that's for staff at the moment, but we're, we're working on getting that set up for students also. And we have, and I was just smiling at Lorna with blether, we have a bit of a blether, and I'm sure your colleges have something similar. And that's again, a lot of our um, staff um, with first lockdown and beyond were isolating. 
and the feeling of loneliness and uh, aloneness was really dreadful. So to come on, there's a great team through the Healthy Working Lives Group who are available to talk to members of staff in a one-to-one, -one, just have a, a chat and let them feel that they're not alone and they're very much valued. Um, and yeah, so I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing that and feel very, very um, privileged to be able to take that forward with a brilliant team. Um, who knows where it goes next? It's growing arms and legs all the time. Um, but what's, what's uh, lovely is people are keen to try new things and if they think it will help, they'll give it a go. So that's something that as a, a, a mindfulness practitioner, I feel very heartened by. So that's me. Thank you very much, Scott. Yeah, thank you, Sandra, and, and thank you, Lorna. And uh, we've got some uh, interesting um, points coming through in the chat. So that's great to have you anymore. Keep putting them in. Uh, a couple of things we'll pick up on. Uh, I've got two questions I'd like to ask you both. and. Uh, the one is uh, in relation to the Students' Association, because uh, there's also, uh, I think Carol from Fife has posted something about the Students' Association. So one, I'm interested to hear from both of you about how the, the role of the Students' Association in, in supporting the, 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 the whole agenda uh, and working with your Students' Associations. And the second question is, if you know the pandemic, uh, everything was lifted tomorrow, the restrictions are all lifted and we're back to whatever the, the, our normal wor world is, what would you not want to lose in terms of what you've discovered now and you'd want to continue doing to support mindfulness and health and well-being? Okay, uh, Lorna, would you like to go first? <laughs> um, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll respond a wee bit to your second question. Okay, yeah. Because I, I probably didn't mention this um, when I did my, my hurried ramble earlier. Um, our counselling service, we had just put two people in post as lockdown happened. They didn't meet each other. They didn't physically come into the college other than their interview. But we worked closely with them and set up a, an extension to it. We, we had counselling before, but this was you know, in addition. And we developed a whole new service with the, member of, the, the two members of staff there. And all of that counselling has been done remotely. And I certainly think that for a lot, not a lot of students, but for, for a, a good number of students, they really preferred working that way. They can refer themselves direct to the service. They don't need to come through any college member of staff. Um, and they can choose to have their camera off. They can choose to message or email. So I, for me, I think um, that plus we've, we've, you know, other things that we've, we've developed remotely, I think for some students, they definitely prefer that way of working. So I think in the future, we, didn't, we wouldn't want to lose the, the variety of support and the different ways of support that students, you know, the different ways students can access support. Um, I think it's, it's, it's probably something we should, I think lockdown has forced us to, to do things differently. Um, and, and I think the bits that work well, we really want to hang on to those. That would be my kind of thoughts on, on that. Anything for you, Sandra, on that same question? Uh, yes, I think that well, we've got three campuses in West College Scotland and the student services um, and um, student association, they work very closely together in all of the campuses and they um, are part of the Healthy Working Lives Group and they've taken quite an active role in making sure that we're all driving initiatives forward together, taking it to students and staff at the same time. Um, the councillors, like uh, Lorna was saying, are readily available. We could always need, we always need more. I think that's that's a given. But um, they are, they work very very hard, and uh, there is a student support officer who she brought together a giza break session, where when we could see each other, students could come and have a, a cup of tea and a gab and all of that. And virtually, it still works very well. She comes in and signposts to necessary organisations but also has a real deep relationship, her name's Kirsty, and she has a real deep relationship with uh, the students that she helps. What would I like to keep? I think some of the theoretical uh, delivery is excellent online and I have know that my team uh, that I work with, my colleagues that I've worked with a long time, have really pushed themselves in uh, filming videos on mobile phones and uh, getting stuff out there that we never thought we would be doing at all. Where we struggle is the practical aspect. I teach massage therapy 
and to try and teach a body massage class virtually is very, very impossible. Um, so I don't want to keep that. I want to get back in to see my students and teach that properly. Mm -hmm. But um, the theory, I, I think, would be, mm -hmm. I don't think we could lose that. That's just been an asset. Thanks. Okay, thanks. So in, in the, the, the few minutes that we've uh, got left, then I'd just like to pick up on the Students Association uh, uh, point, because I know, uh, I'll have to confess, now I'm the, the, the link uh, HMI with West Lothian College, and I, I know that the Students Association has just grown massively in their confidence and the way that they work over the last number of years, which has put them in a really good place, uh, you know, for supporting this agenda and helping to develop that sense of community. So I don't know if you, you'd like to say more about just how important it has to have that a, a really well-developed, engaged uh, student association in supporting this particular agenda. Yeah, that's, it's been massive for us and it's been massively helpful and, and doing a lot of the practical stuff, um, you know, has, has been great with the student association. So they do a lot of the actual going out to help students, you know, taking out a laptop or making sure they can access different things. And what's been kind of interesting for me is I've probably seen more of the student association than I ever have, because again, with, with meetings being um, virtual, people can probably make meetings a little bit more easy, easily than they could. So, you know, the Student Association have have really, over the last few years, they've built in, in, in terms of their role, but I would say during lockdown, they've become more visible across college on different groups and different committees, and we've had input from the Student Association, which has been invaluable in terms of us then responding to what students need and what students are looking for. So it's it's... It's, it's, it's even grown in strength over lockdown, I would think, whereas initially you might think, how would that work? But, but it has. So that's, that's been really positive for us as well, Scott. Yeah. And Sandra? I think just as I said earlier, it's a very strong student association. And just to endorse what um, Lorna was saying, we have, I think, become more bonded, if you like, because they can make meetings, are actively involved in uh, the crossover between staff and students and are a kind of conduit to that and people just really have the best interests of the students at heart so they are there to to troubleshoot and to really look out for anybody that's incredibly vulnerable and again signpost them to where they need to go so excellent thank you thank you very much well th thank you both um, we're doing good time-wise uh, uh, today, so, so thank you both for your input, that's been really good. And of course, uh, as we always stress with, with these uh, sessions, when we get input from the likes of yourself, Lorna and Sandra, this isn't putting people on pedestals to say this is how you should be doing it, it's just yeah. to get the conversation going. And, you know, we're talking today and last week about uh, health and well-being and mindfulness, and sometimes just sharing the situation in itself is good for, for health and well-being because it's like you're in it together and it just sort of builds that support network up. So again, great thanks to, to both of you for your in, inputs today, much appreciated. So we're, we're about to come to an end now. And uh, so I just encourage those who are, are with us live just to hang on for a while and kind of a, a wider conversation. But uh, again, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the session, found it useful and uh, you know keep in touch everyone. So thank you very much, bye. Thank you.